hi uh, good morning everyone so um, i'm dr balamurli from chennai i'm going to talk to you about the challenges you now you really saw a very nice presentation about how uh, you can do and pericles through the ky technique and the difficulties but i'm going to show you a few examples of what are the challenges you can get so the pericles screw since it was first introduced in the 1980s by roy camille you know there's a lot of advantage but there are some disadvantages because it's in close proximity to neural structures is in close proximity to paravertebral important structures and hence percutaneous screws became very popular um and now this percutaneous screws we have different techniques similar to how we have techniques with open procedures like a free hand technique or a funnel technique and in out out in out in technique so you can't do all of these in a percutaneous pericle screw fixation because you're relying on more radiological anatomy rather than a direct visualization of where your entry point is your facet joints and other things now the problems with percutaneous fixation are one is yes there is a steep learning curve um, and you need to be able to understand certain anatomical variants and landmarks you need a good hand eye coordination you need a tactile feeling without being able to see anything uh because you may sometimes have a doubt whether you are on the right trajectory um there are deformed pericles deformed spine which you need to know how to do with it and also if the facet joint is hypertrophied and you're not able to dock your jamshidi um and the risk of radiation should be understood the most important thing with um before you even think about how you do your pericles screw or cannulation is your proper positioning of the patient so you need to have a good position where you have anatomical orientation on the x rays there should not be any obstruction radio peak or or padding your table should be uh, able to tilt on either direction your c arm should be maneuverable maneuverable and your c arm should be well draped so before you actually start the procedure you would take an ap of your entire length of what level you want to operate and probably one level up and down um and also both in the ap and lateral strap your patient very nicely so that in case you need to do site alteration and if you're going to do a decompression or a t lift where you want to go over the top and you want to have that maneuverability and some patients are really big and if your uh, table is not stable you're going to be into problems so preoperatively you need to be absolutely sure you can see the owl's eye of the pedicles and also you want to get your end plates parallel sometimes when you're doing scoliotic spine for every pedicle screw level you may have to change the position of your ap and lateral and if you're using navigation you want to get a good axial view where you can actually see the pedicles you need to also understand some of the um landmarks and the diameters of the upper thoracic mid thoracic lower thoracic the angulation of your upper thoracic mid and lower thoracic and lumbar so it's very important to understand because your tower the way it stands will give you an idea of about whether you are actually right if your towers are in different direction then you know that there's something not right and your alignment is not good um so this is very important the sagittal orientation again you need to make sure that there is an anatomical way in which your pedicle goes down but also in a straight forward preferred way where you can actually align your rod very easily um even though you have a polyaxial head the technique has been described nicely but you want to make sure that by the end of your ap and lateral that your tip of your screw lies within these two red lines that is the medial border of your pedicle and the midline of the vertebra and you have that's the ideal position of how it should be on your superior um, compared to your superior end plates um umesh had already mentioned about the different retractor sleeves yes we do not have many of these flexible sleeves in india uh, but these are very very useful when you're doing deformity a uh, complex as especially when you're doing high grade lysthesis uh, it is available in india um, they are expensive slightly but it's worth considering these and there are the different types the standard tower type the, the malleable type the tower ones uh, can also be bent some of these can be also reduction screw so we need to understand there are some relative contraindications where you can't see in an obese patient in a sclerotic bone high grade lysthesis in severe deformity and osteopenic bone and osteoporotic bone so we're going to look at some of these challenges so i'm going to divide these challenges into three different categories one are patient factors then the technique itself how do you adjust the technique and what are the adjuncts that you can use to enhance your technique if you look at patient factors i would say the commonest factor is your obese patient so in an obese patient you need to make sure that you start more lateral Uh, compared to when you start for this is an ak space uh, which we operated almost a year and a half ago 
uh, who had a degenerative uh, scoliosis with severe radicular pain, but she was about 140 kg. The positioning itself was very difficult. Uh, you have to make sure you trap the normal belts may not fix. Um, and then once you uh, place your towers, you need to make sure that you're able to get the good alignment of your of your various towers. At the same time, you need to make sure that you're able to do T-lifts from multiple angles uh, at, at different levels. You're able to do a decompression and you're able to place a rod. So the challenge is where do you put your skin incision? How do you get it? And how do you angulate it for every level in your curve? So as you can see here for the obese patient, your curve should be at least another centimeter more lateral compared to a normal screws. So there are different techniques for these uh, deformed pedicles. When you have especially a cortical channel or a very small absent uh, pedicle, I would prefer that it is better not to do these, uh, especially if there are multiple levels in a scoliosis by percutaneous techniques, unless you have a help of navigation. Do not use them with fluoroscopy because you can get it wrong. Because they're not only deformed, but they can also have intradural abnormalities and ectasia and other problems where you can cause dural and neural damage. So how to redirect? So sometimes you, you know that you put in your gem shiri, the gem shiri is gone through the pedicle into the body, but you're not happy with the position, how the screw is going to place. And your K-wire is already there, you don't want to remove it. So here you just enter into the body and stop. And then you get your tap. And then you push your K-wire in so that you know that your tap is there. And then if you proceed any further, you're going to bend the K-wire and the K-wire is going to get stuck. So now remove the K-wire. Then you place a fresh K-wire and then tap the K-wire in the direction that you want. And then followed by this, then you tap further and then place the screw. So this is one other technique. And especially if you have a very adjacent L5 and S1 head, especially in high-grade listhesis, or in a very uh, obese patient, where you're going to have actually both your, your um, screws trying to touch each other. In this, you can either place your S1 pericle screw more inferior, or you use one of those uh, flexible retractors, which will help you to be able to get your screws, or sometimes you may have to put one of the screws, and, and then you may have to do them through a small mini open technique uh, to put the rods inside. Um, so cannulation of small pedicles sometimes can be very challenging, but you have to make sure that the minimum they are four millimeters. Otherwise, you will not even be able to get your Jamshidi needle in. And then it becomes very difficult and it will definitely cut throughout either laterally or medially. So you can use an oblique view where you actually have a bullseye view of the pedicle. So this is something you have to learn. And I would suggest the younger uh, uh, surgeons to try to practice once in a while to look at a normal pedicle through a bullseye view and see if you can put in your K-wire and Jamshidi needle. And obviously, you can compare with AP and lateral. So this is one technique where for small pedicles, you can directly have a look. The skin incision really matters when you're doing multiple level. Um, because if they're not aligned in a straight line, as you can see in the black line here, you, have, you are going to run into problems placing your um, rods. And you may have to sometimes remove uh, one of the screws. For example, you may have to remove that screw if you're not able to get the alignment. So looking at how long your rod should be, whether you should bend your rod, because most rods come pre-bent, um, and um, initially from which side do you enter. So all these things you need to really do. Measuring best is to measure above the skin. Um, you can, as a general rule, you should make sure that all your towers are, the height is same, and at the same time, your um, alignment and, and, and the line of your screws should be same. And then after that, you should try to come in from the closest to the skin, usually from the superior um, side of the um, cranial side of the patient. You can start passing your rod. And you also need to know whether you need to make a separate incision or you can pass from the furthermost rod. So each system varies. Uh, sclerotic pedicles, ideally, I would suggest that if you have a sclerotic pedicle, the Jamshidi needle will break, will never enter. And here, if you, are, if you are new, if you are not experienced, I would suggest you do them completely open. In case you are able to um, do these Jamshidi needles, if you are not able to do them, um, then you can use a drill to make a small opening through the drill, and then you can go in through, through high-speed drill. So again, I would suggest try to go for open surgery if possible. Um, sclerotic pedicle for the osteoporotic pedicle, again, the key is the K-wire. Your K-wire should make sure that your K-wire does not proceed too far ahead. Because when you're doing your tap, when you're putting in your screws, your K-wire can advance and cause damage. So make sure you stop your K-wire. And when you're not doing or you're doing a decompression or a T-lift, 
you can bend your kyr and fix them so it does not advance in high grade listhesis i would suggest that you keep your um uh, open procedure you do a decompression you place your gem sheet and then your quadrant is docked over and after that you actually visualize your ap because ap viewing can be sometimes difficult in high grade your lateral view should not be a problem so ap i would see by seeing through the quadrant or an expandable cage where you are looking where is the entry point and then go to a lateral and then you can tilt your table or you can tilt the cm according to this and the same thing you use for a scoliotic spine at every level the technique is the same you just have to tilt your table and cm so that you get your bull's eye your owl's eye and your midline um, and the superior and inferior end plates are aligned so that is how you do you try to align for every level so you can see just by a small tilt of your table um, how it changes the whole orientation changes sometimes i use a hybrid technique when i'm doing either tumors or this is a case of a malignancy uh, where it's a palliative surgery you're doing a decompression removing the pressure so you can do percutaneous screws and do a small midline and decompress the cord and then at the same time you can do this so there are multi multiple complications which you can avoid if you do this i'm not going to talk about adjuncts because it's all about robotics and navigation so as many adjuncts as you have you can use so in summary percutaneous pericle screw fixations are simple but have a learning curve the technique to rescue the wrong position wrong trajectory needs experience deformity and anatomical variations need a close study pre operatively and understanding your limitations so never hesitate to convert a surgery into open rather than causing serious damage to the patient thank you very much for the opportunity